Jesus said that the Holy Spirit would be given to speak about him. That is why the Holy Spirit is the soul of the Catholic Church. Now, is this just an image or is this for real? Dear brothers and sisters, Salve Maria. Today's Gospel is presented to us by St. John. Chapter 14, verses 15 to 21, and is a narration of the promise that our Lord Jesus Christ makes to the Apostles when He pledges to send them the Holy Spirit. Let's, let's listen now to an excerpt of today's beautiful Gospel passage. Jesus said, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept because it neither sees nor knows him. So the Lord here promises the disciples that he will send them the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. Now, it is said that the Holy Spirit is the soul, is, is the heart of the Catholic Church. This comes from the great doctor of the Church, St. Augustine, that the Catechism of the Catholic Church quotes when it says, What the soul is to the human body, the Holy Spirit is to the body of Christ, which is the Church. The Holy Spirit, says St. Says Augustine, is the soul, is the heart of the Church. Now, when we hear something like this, we often think, or we're tempted to think, that this is simply an analogy, just, just an image of a beautiful thought. We think, we have the temptation to think that the relationship between the Holy Spirit and the Church is simply symbolic, is simply an image that, that we can kind of understand by associating the relationship that exists um, in us too, between, between the human body and the soul. In fact, the opposite would be more exact. God created the human body to represent the divine realities, to represent these divine realities more perfectly. So, it's the human body that's the symbol of the mystical body of Christ, that is the Church. So, the Church is the mystical body of Christ, Christ is the head of this body, and you and me, the faithful of the Church, are the members of this body. Our physical body is a symbol of this much greater reality. <laughs> but our body has a soul, and in the same way, the Holy Spirit is the soul of the Church. Now, what does the soul do to our body? It gives our body life. Without the soul, we're just dead bodies. We're just corpuses. Similarly, the Holy Spirit lives in our souls and gives us life. When we are in communion with the Church and in the state of grace, the Holy Spirit is present and lives in us. And in the same way, the Holy Spirit lives and gives life to the Church. The Holy Spirit gives each one of us life, gives life to the Church, and gives life to our souls, not as an outsider, but by embracing our human condition. But someone may ask, Father, what's the difference? Is it our soul that gives us life, or is it the Holy Spirit that gives us life? Now, what I'm going to say might surprise you, but the Catholic Church teaches us that it's our soul that gives us our human life, but it's the Holy Spirit that gives us divine life. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us a participation in the life of God. By the indwelling of the Holy Trinity in our souls, we truly participate in the life of God. This is not just an image, but a reality. This is true life. Let me give you an example. Imagine if I were to delicately pick up a, a little sparrow and, and blow or puff on the sparrow. And by miracle, I was able to give the little sparrow life, human life. 
Now, the sparrow would continue to look like a sparrow. It would continue to be uh, just a sparrow, but it would now have human life. Miracle. It would now be able to talk, to think, and to learn, just like a human. So, the sparrow would be sitting down here on my hand beside me and would start listening to, um, to me and, and maybe even asking questions on, on my gospel commentary, maybe even, maybe even correcting some of my English grammar. However, when a little worm would pass by, our friendly little sparrow would at once pounce upon the worm. He's still a sparrow, isn't he? And so he still likes worms, though he participates in human life. Something similarly happens to us through divine grace. Despite having been baptized, we are still all just humans. But through divine grace, through the action of the Holy Spirit in baptism, we now participate in the life of God. That does not mean that we do not have our human inclinations anymore. Remember the sparrow who still yearned for that little worm? Well, this is something so true that, that there's a, a theologian uh, who says that just like lions belong to the animal kingdom and palm trees um, belong to the plant kingdom, the person, the human, in a state of grace belongs to the race of God. He's a human, of course, but with baptism, he lives the life of God. And it is the Holy Spirit who works this miracle. He makes the divine life of God circulate through the church, through our souls. And in a beautiful comparison, the liturgy of the church, speaking about Our Lady, the Mother of God, says that she is the virginal neck of this body. All graces pass through her in order to reach us, because Our Lady is considered the mediatrix. She's the, the, the channel of all graces. And this is the mystery that Christ revealed to the apostles in today's gospel. That's why he says, And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. In fact, um, in, in the same Gospel of St. John, our Lord explains this reality a little bit more when, when Judas, um, not the Iscariot, asked him, Lord, why are you going to reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Now, this little passage is not in today's gospel, but it is a continuation of where today's gospel ends. And our Lord answered and said to him, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Make our dwelling with him. This is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Trinity in our souls, in the souls of the just. The Holy Trinity truly lives in us and makes us participate in the very life of God, in the very nature of God. Let's ask Our Lady, Mother of Jesus and Our Mother, Spouse of the Divine Holy Spirit, to unite us more and more to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Salve Maria.